Hello everyone, how's everyone doing? You guys are good too? I'm good too. Let's go to today's video session. Here we go. Today is the time. Panasonic 3D O. Welcome back. So what we gotta say about this today? Yeah. So how's everyone doing today? How do you like my rock and roll music? As always. So today's video session is on Panasonic 3DO. Now we know this system was back from the 1990s. A lot of the videos that we see on YouTube on the actual games, they're from between, you ain't gonna believe this, 2015 to 2020, right? A lot of, few people actually, not a lot of, Few people have bought Panasonic 3D in the year 2020, man. How's that possible? That's just insane. I was so surprised. People are buying this, you know, right now. Now, with the Panasonic 3D, this system was it successful or a failure? That's a big question about it. Let's just get to the basics first before we talk about success and failure. <laughs> I think you guys already know that answer anyway. But still, I'll just, just clarify it again. The system was said to be released in 994. Was the system really released in 994? Because if you look at some of the discs that are released on it, they were back in 1993. Mm. Now, how is that possible? But I, in terms of the UK market, I think it's always been said that the Panasonic 3 was released in 1994. The 1993 comes from Japanese software. You see, this might sound really bizarre. There are two people involved in this system. Panasonic and 3 I know we already talked about this before. I'm just reconfirming the information so people know. Because this video is more depth this time. 3DO is an American company. Trip Hawkins was the man behind Fredio. It was something to do with EA. And that is why a lot of electronic arts games appeared on Panasonic Fredio. A lot of them. Trust me, they were one of the best EA games I have ever seen on any platform. That's guaranteed, man. <clears throat> Even if you look at games like Need for Speed, you see the sequels to that game was Need for Speed 2, 3, 4, 5. Sequels in the line, in numbers, okay? But if you look at all these games, 2, 3, 4, 5, they were all terrible. They were dreadful games. Now the original Panasonic 3D game, the Need for Speed was the best one. Trust me, it was the best one. And it was the most enjoyable game to play. Really good photorealistic graphics. Okay, there's not so much going on in the game. 
Because this man, there's only this one guy who's challenging you. He's like, give me those keys. He's saying stuff like that here. And then he's got this music. You can see his face in the, to the middle, right? And there was a music to the game. And he had one of the best music where, where the option is, you just go, I can't do it properly or something like that. The music was really good. So yeah, 3DO was Trip Hawkins. Now the problem with the 3DO company, they didn't know how to manufacture systems. They had no idea. They don't know what to do with it. They only had the technology. They had no idea what to do with it. So what they did, they went up to Panasonic. If you look at this very clearly, if 3DO manufactured the system, it would have said made in the US at the back. But it didn't, did it? No, it didn't say that. The system, so Trip Hawkins went to Panasonic, which is Matsushita Electrical Limited, something like that, the company's name, something like that. And they, Panasonic manufactured the system. They manufactured it. Them are the people who are responsible for everything to do with the 3D or games console. Because they became the main manufacturers and Panasonic was the, also the person to market the system themselves. They had to do everything for it. 3D or didn't do nothing. They just made the technology, the bits and pieces inside the system, that's it. Apart from that, they didn't do anything else. So, if the system is made by Panasonic, if you look behind the box, and even when you pick up the system below, it says made in Japan. It says that because the system was made by Panasonic. They manufactured it. So everything that comes in Panasonic today, you won't believe this from the Panasonic 3D or games console, game controller, mouse, gun, and they also released a video CD adapter. Okay, all of this stuff I just mentioned, they all say made in Japan. Every single one of them. Wow, excellent stuff, isn't it? Made in Japan stock. There you go. Panasonic 3D is totally made in Japan system, you know, and all its accessories. If you look at the Panasonic 3D, on the right hand side, there was an EXT. EXT means extension. That extension was for, this is the right hand side, that was for the video CD adapter. When you connect that video CD adapter to it, looks firmly, doesn't stick out, no, no. Just goes inside very nicely. You can play VCD movies. Yeah, you can play VCD movies, man. On the Panasonic 3D or when you actually put the adapter in there. It does cost a bit, but once you do that, you can play VCD movies in it. Because normally, without the VCD adapter, you can play uh, games, audio CDs. It did stuff like that. You couldn't really play any movies, really. No, not with VCD or DVD. No, you couldn't do any of that. DVD wasn't even in that time anyway. No, DVD came after a long time. It was only audio CDs and VCDs back in that time. Okay. There was no DVDs, DVDs at that time. So everything was, everything was in that system. Now the biggest problem, was it Panasonic or 3DO? What were these two companies doing to get this system successful? The question was, the system successful or not? 
let's get through this now. 3 do company made a lot of mistakes. Obviously, the technology was 3 dos But they got Panasonic involved to do everything for them. Everything. They even... You know, you ain't gonna believe this. Panasonic did more than that, you know. You know the Panasonic 3 do K-Sync? Of the console, the K-Sync? Of everything, man. All of the stuff I just told you, the K, all the casings on them was all by, made by Panasonic. The wires were made by Panasonic, wherever they got them from. The front ports, whatever. And on the game controller, all Panasonic. It was a lot of hard work done by Panasonic. Everything, really. They just made it inside the circuitry, nothing else. Apart from that, they had no other knowledge. 3DO thought of an idea that we can destroy 16 bit error. 16 bit error. They go, if we bring out the 3DO games console, we can finish off machines like Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo. And SMK need you AES and need you CD stuff like that because these are the systems which ones were there before video. Okay, now you gotta understand Mega Drive and Super Nintendo were quite popular. A lot of games were getting produced. We're gonna go into the games. Which system literally has the best games? Because this is very frustrating. This part is. As I said, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, sorry, yeah, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo were popular. If this system was be if this system was there in 1994, it was a wrong year to release it. Yeah, people like analysts like us who analyze what was going on. But the problem was the 3D or company should understand it themselves. It's not like us explaining this to you guys out there. There's no point really in telling you this stuff now because it's just all gone, isn't it? It's all gone and dusted. It's just too late. But it's good to just tell what the heck the company is doing. Because if you guys think about it, if Sega Mega Drive was really popular, yeah, back in 90... Okay, in terms of this system, is not important. Isn't it? We had games like Virtual Racing, Sonic 3 and Knuckles Super Street Fighter 2 New Challenges Fail Fury, Summer Showdown Roy Star, Vectorman Rockers Terminal, The Terminal Comic Zone Eternal Champions Take a look at all these games. They're pretty popular games. Does that mean they're really bad on the 3DO games? <laughs> you gotta think. The Battlefield 3DO was pretty powerful. Okay? We're gonna go through that later. Now, releasing a hey, Battlefield 3DO back in 1994 was a big mistake. Yeah. Because if Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo were very popular and they were releasing really good games on there, there was no point 3DO stepping in there. What was Trip Hawkins thinking of? Because if people are already enjoying their previous systems, they don't need to buy another one. It does not work like that. It doesn't work with powerful hardware, man. It does, it does not work like that, man. This company is completely silly. They were putting power against weak hardware. But the point here is that Sega Mega Drive Super Nintendo might be weaker hardware, but they had a lot of good games on them. And a lot of people owned these 
games consoles and their games. And even Super Nintendo had games like Mario Kart, Super Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return Jedi, uh, Star Wing. Pile of wings. Super Mario All Stars. I think it's Super Mario Yoshi's Island. Stuff like that. F Zero. Clear Instinct. Super Street Fighter Two New Challenge, and so on. I mean, he already had these kind of popular tiles out there. To be honest. I mean, if you already own these kind of systems and you got these kind of tiles on them, people ain't just gonna ignore it because they were enjoying them, weren't they? And people love them, classics on them as well, because whatever old games they owned on them from from the 1990s, like 1990, 91, 92, 93. And then 3D just steps in 94 because they already got 1990, 91, 92, 93. They already got these few years classic titles on there. There's tons of titles on there. Okay, then 1994. So they brought the console at the wrong time. That's the first part. The second part is when should they have released? the 3D games console. We're gonna go into the Panasonic thing as well, yeah? Because the Panasonic thing is different to that. This is a part of 3D what, the, what they were doing. So 3D company should release this console. You see the 3D company was keep on finding different manufacturers. What the? Why would you go for different Damn manufacturers! You know, look, look how many there were. Panasonic, Gold Star, Sanyo. You're probably quite thinking, I've never heard of the Sanyo one, but it is. You can get it from eBay and all that. If you look, the more majority. Even the UK market, it was Panasonic and Gold Star. The Sanyo one lost really fast. Nobody hardly bought that one. It failed really fast. That was going really fast. Then there was Panasonic Gold Star as well in there. But Gold Star did better than Sanyo. But Gold Star. As if the 3D wasn't selling so well, Gold Star stepped out. Panasonic lasted the longest. We're going to go through that a bit later on. Also, 3D O Compre is even more silly than that. They were trying to put two more manufacturers in there. You know who they were? <laughs> Samsung and Toshiba. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. Why would you put that many manufacturers in there? Oh, this is crazy. But at the end, end of the day, Samsung, Toshiba never got the licenses. They never got the license. So them, them manufacturers didn't get the chance of the 3D technology. They didn't get the chance, so they stepped out. Yeah, now the second part was, when should you release the 3D you should only use a 3D or games console when Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo. I did mention SNK Neo Geo AS, Neo City. That already failed. The Neo Geo AS was too expensive as a games console, and the cartridge season was too expensive. That flopped miserably because of the price tag. And because of that, nobody wanted to take part in UG City either. Because they already made a mistake. Nobody wanted to take part in SK EU systems. They were already gone. The only competitor was then um, Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. 
till the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo are not gone completely you cannot release a 3 deal games console man alright you can't get on release one but what year was Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo would have went 1995 they would have went in that year and in that same time 3DO could have released the system in 1995 and they could have competed against Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation not flipping Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo you're not going to compete against them that was their era. You're supposed to be competing against not 16 bit era, but with a 32 bit era. Okay? Believe me, Panasonic 3 do would have finished off Sega Saturn anyway. I think it would have finished it off. It was just like they were releasing really, really good stuff on it. They, ha they had all the best titles, you see. Panasonic 3D. That's what the problem was. Now the third part <laughs> is by far the worstest. $850. That's how much this system cost. $850! Another mistake. Third part. By 3 deal. Another mistake. They had no clue what they were doing with it. They were so dumb, dumb, dumb. Silly and dumb. They're really stupid. 850. They sold it in their home country territories, man. <laughs> what was going on? Who the heck could afford that? You gotta think that how much this system was a cost in, J in Japan in 1993. Because originally, this system was released in Japan because the system was manufactured by Panasonic and everything which was made by Panasonic was all made in Japan everything everything was made in Japan if you don't believe me look at any pictures from eBay from the back the below Look at the back of the system. Look at the the label on it. At the bottom of the label, it says "Made in Japan." It will say it on every single thing that was made on the system. It will say "Made in Japan." Only. Okay. And that was a really big thing. Now we know all the mistakes that 3 d made. So why did Panasonic was the last ma last company standing and he was still supporting it? The reason behind all this game is you see we're gonna go into the games as well. You see Panasonic knew <laughs> Didn't you know that at the start? You know what he knew? $850 too much, no one's gonna buy it. It's been said worldwide Panasonic 3 do sold 3 million units. Hmm, okay, not bad, but not the best sales ever. Not so bad, but you can't say it's a very good selling, isn't it? Just with 3 million, but that's how much it sold, 3 million. I think it's if you look at many other machines, many other platforms, there was a lot of systems that sold less than 3 million. Hmm. We're going to go through the machines in a separate video. Which systems even sold worse than Panasonic 3 Okay, that was the next video. Now, Panasonic knew we're having problems. Because Panasonic was the main man who manufactured the system and he was marketing the product. 
He was doing everything for the system. Everything. He took everything on it. Everything was releasing from the console, the casing, I mean the ports, the cables, the controllers, the wires, whatever cables he was raising, audio, video cables, they all made by Panasonic man. Everything. You see, Panasonic was an electronic company. He could easily release cables. He was releasing all the cables himself on it. Everything. He didn't leave anything <laughs> to step out of his system. So when he found out 850 was too much, he dropped it down to $699. $699. Is that a reasonable price? Of course not. Are you buying a PC or something? <laughs> and selling for $699? Price is still too silly. Panasonic think, needs to think wisely. He's keep on making these mistakes on price tags. But I, I think I want to buy a system without price anyway. It's too much. And you know what? He still knew it's too much. You know what he did after that? He went even price drop again. $499 now. <laughs> price has gone lower, isn't it? It still didn't sell. You see, if you make one mistake because he made the first blow of 850, he was spoiled then. He was already spoiled. I think Panasonic could have made, made it through. Even 3DO made all the few mistakes. Panasonic could have made it through. Panasonic could have made it through if he put the price at a very cheap price. Very cheap. And lower the hardware bit. But the company didn't do that. And $499. Then he went down to as you know, the UK, the price tag, you know what she was in the UK? £399. Who can afford that back in the Sega Mega Grand Super Nintendo world? They expected them to pay £399 in the UK. <laughs> Why was it so expensive? Let's go into the powerful hardware now. 16 big consoles were really weak hardware. Panasonic 3DO 32-bit multiplayer gaming system. That's the machine's full name. It was really powerful. Mm. It was a 32-bit gaming machine. It was very powerful indeed. Really powerful. Even if you look at Sega's efforts, there is add-ons like Mega Drive 32X, Mega CD, even they couldn't touch the thing. Mega Drive, Mega Drive 32 x Mega CD, all of these machines are all weak. All of them. All three of them. None of them couldn't touch the Panasonic 3 Because mm -mm. it was 32 bit. And the action inside the body was really powerful. Because I already told you the hardware specifications in my previous videos. Trust them carefully. I'm not going to go through that. The the system was too ahead of its time. Too ahead of its time. Too ahead of its time. What does it actually mean? It means it's too advanced to release in that time. It's too forward. You don't need that kind of technology back in 994 EC what 3 company is doing and that's why the price was really high in it okay that's the price they wanted they probably use very expensive components inside the bonnet and that's why it was 399 
That was another mistake. But if 3D was bringing this powerful technology, and you just can't put it forward in the 16 bit era. So Panasonic is still there. So what did Panasonic do then? He was totally confused. Then he went for the final blowout, which was 299 pounds. <laughs> they're gonna lose money. They're gonna keep on losing money if they keep on going on. They went for 299. I don't know how low they went more than that. That's the only number I know. Then he went lower as 299 pounds. It's still too expensive. I understand one thing about this price tags. If you pour a system $850, which was probably in the US, wherever it was, and then you got £399 in the UK, you already scaring the customers away. You already scared them away in the UK, in Japan or US, while a high price tag down there. You already scared the customers away. And once you do that, no one's going to cut the system again. You can keep on putting these low price tags. You already made the custom run away. You flooded it. You you spoiled the whole, damn whole game. No one's going to buy your system. This is the thing that Microsoft was doing with his Xbox One. You see, Microsoft Xbox One was more expensive than PS4. It's quite expensive. He kept on lowering his system price prices as well. When he kept on doing that, he could to win. Couldn't do nothing. Because in games consoles, if your price isn't right, of course you need a game exclusives as well. Microsoft exclusives weren't good as Sony PS4s. They weren't good as Sony ones. But he kept on lowering the price. And even he had some exclusives, he still couldn't win. It wasn't working. But did Panasonic 3D have any exclusives? I'll tell you something. They had ton, ton, lots of, lots of, lots of exclusives. There were lots of exclusives on it. Lots. What kind of exclusives did he have? Gridders. Before we go into these games, if we look at Mega Drive, Mega Drive 32X, Mega CD, Super Nintendo, New Geo S, New City. None of these hardware were powerful as Panasonic Studio. Okay? And can any of these previous systems just mentioned compare their games with Panasonic Studio? Not a chance. No chance. Panasonic 3D was far powerful. It was a lot better. I'll give them that. It was a lot better, man. Really impressive hardware, man. The games were absolutely stunning, man. I'm gonna give you examples that you wouldn't even get in today's world. You wouldn't even get them today's gaming, man. Great. Let's talk about its software. In terms of, okay, in terms of what the hardware, it was successful in that. It was also successful the software, but it wasn't successful the way 3DO bought the system in 16B era. Like as I told you before, Bringing your system in 1994 in the wrong time and the high price tags it spoiled everything for them. All right, and these games were on the system was far better than anything you'll ever own. Okay, none of them systems could compare to these anyway. All right. 
That includes Sega, Nintendo, SNK. None of them. None of them could cook really. They were all weak hardware. Alright. I would say even the forthcoming Atari Jaguar and Sega Saturn, I don't think even they were bad then. Mm -mm. No. They weren't successful systems either. Even Atari Jaguar and Sega Saturn wasn't good as Pan Centurio. I don't think they were. Not a chance. Because the amount of quality titles Pan Centurio had. Atari Jaguar was by the worstest game console ever made, man. The support on that system was terrible. Every single game was. Some of them were okay. Like a loose on a soldier. And checkered flag, which is a copy of Virtual Racing. That was a much on Atari Jaguar. Jaguar CD came out. It was even worse. I don't want to really talk about that. And then Sega Saturn had few bits and bats like. Sega Rally, Tetron USA, but what was it? yeah, Virtual Fighter 2 and stuff like that, Fighting Vipers, but it's just following the same trend, isn't it? All he is, he only just had Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers, that's all. He had nothing else. At Sega Rally, and, um, and he had Knights. That's the only games he had, I don't think that's enough, really. There was nothing else on them. Most of the games are like, you know, from third party support, you know, going on PlayStation and all that crap. Even if you look at the PlayStation, the original PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, it's saying that it's really successful. Really. So you got a big lineup of games on your system. I don't think so. What the PlayStation was doing, it was. Taking all the games from Panasonic Studio. Then from the Panasonic Studio games, it released sequels. Every single sequel that PlayStation released from the original Panasonic Studio games, they were all rubbish, man. All rubbish. I'll give you primary examples. The original Need for Speed that came on Panasonic Studio. PlayStation released Need for Speed 2, 3, 4, 5. All crap. Then the original one we had on Panasonic Studio was Starfighter. Then PlayStation Go is another game called, I think it was called, to sequel to the game, Starfighter 3000. It was flipping terrible. 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 Then, I don't know what to say about this stuff, man. <laughs> then we had Panasonic Studio releasing Road Rash. Then PlayStation go release it, Road Rash Jailbreak. Don't play that game, it's flipping crap, it's flipping boring, man. I don't like the look of the game. Can you see what was going on? Then PlayStation go and put extra games like Bushido Played, Tomb Number 2, Tekken, blah de blah, Reduce a Type 4, Wiper. Then it goes and puts more games around there. Few bits and bats on it, and it becomes really successful. Blah de blah. The public. Doesn't understand anything, do they? Even the forthcoming machines like Atari Jaguar, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation did not have games like Panasonic Studio. Now, let's go into our Panasonic Studio games. What am I trying to say here? Come on, my Gridders, I'm not even talking about it. Am I? What am I doing? Gridders. Gridders actually is a puzzle game. You know, when you have puzzle games like Column and Tetris. It's nothing like that. So basically, you got these 3D grids with blocks moving on there. It's got like squares on there. You got this boy on there, and he's got a dog. He's actually moving on this grid in 3D. It's not like some kind of shapes. You got this character moving on there, and you can see the actual big blocks in 3D is moving. I think it's the greatest puzzle game I've ever seen, man. Gridders. That must be played, man. Okay. Then EA brought one of the most amazing games like FIFA International Soccer, Need for Speed, Road Rush. Okay. 
give up great games like that. Um, I can't think what the original games or the like that. Yes, then Studio 3D made some great games. I mean, there was a good game called Battle Sport. Battle Sport was like a game, a great multiplayer game, where you got this board, you're running these kind of spaceships, you have to get the ball and score the goals. The person who scores the most majority goals wins. Then there was a game called Blade Force. Blade Force is a great shooter, man. Hmm. He was a great shooter. By the way, Battle Sport was bought by Cyclone Studios and Studio Studio. There were two people involved in that. Maybe Cyclone Studios did more to not work, that's why the game was better. Blade Force was another studio video game. It was a great shooter, good graphics, very detailed. There was this guy called Terrence Pritt. This guy's going on his some kind of I don't know, he's Japanese, I don't know what it was. He says, God, this is Terrence Pitt. He's just all that. So the game was really good. Alright. That was another good exclusive on the Plans on Video. Really good game. Another game that Studio Studio bought was Killing Time. Some of the stages were good, some of them were a bit boring, I would say. But it was still a great game. It wouldn't be better if the whole game was exciting. But it wasn't. It's kind of like a weird story, like everyone's not going to like it. Um, there was this woman that's just done all this crap in there. You have to just follow the story and play the game. It was an FPS shoot, by the way. Okay. Studio 3D made another game called, which was really, really good. It had a nice film actors in there. Phoenix 3. Okay. Phoenix 3. Phoenix 3 was a really good game with a it's like a platform and a shooter with this guy is walking. It's like, like a real life kind of character moving in there. Really good graphic, very good gameplay man. Phoenix 3, check that out. A very good exclusive man. Which you want to find on a platform by the way. So that's another one you could check out. What about for fighting games? What did Panasonic 3 do for fighting games? There were quite a number of fighting games on the system. Balls, the director's cut. Why is it called Balls? <laughs> a kind of funny name. You see all the characters, they got balls. From the arms to the legs, stuff like that. It's like a 3D fighting game. I really think it's quite a good game. You gotta get addicted to the game a bit, because you might think it's a bit boring. But once you get used to the game, it's quite a funny game. They go, they're drilling all these characters to go. And then baseball bat, boom, and stuff like that. It's really good. So yeah, that's a that's a good example X of exclusive Panasonic video game. Um, what else was on there? Um, there was Primal Rage. I know Primal Rage came on every single format, but I tell you one thing. Primal Rage on Panasonic 3D was the best version. In graphics, gameplay, sound, cutscene, everything of that game, Primal Rage was definitely the best. There was these prehistoric creatures. It's a fighting game. Really good graphics. A very good fighting game, by the way. Right. Okay, this people a lot of don't people don't understand. They keep on saying this game's on Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Well it wasn't. Because this is this game was all in the 32-bit era. This game we're talking about here is, is made by Capcom. Su so Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. A very good game with great graphics animations. Stunning looking graphics, classic gameplay, stunning music, good fighting style. When they go moving in the back, you can see the, the movement on the back. They change when they move like that, when they go back like that, and when they move forward. It was a great game, man. This game is absolutely incredible, man. 
it might be one of the greatest fighting game on Panasonic and Studio, in my opinion. Good, really, really well made game that was. You see, this game was only for versions for in CA, EU, US. They got this version. There was another game that Capcom made. It was Super Street Fighter 2X Grandmaster Challenge. That was only for Japanese. JAP, by the way. It only came for Japanese market. This is the same game which came on the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, Sega Dreamcast. Sega Dreamcast. But the Sega Dreamcast game I did not like. Because that game, well, obviously, both of these versions are made for Japanese. That game was for online barrels. You need internet, online access for that. What's the point of buying that game? The game was really expensive. And it was literally made for the Japanese market. And the other people should not be buying that game. Because if you want to play the online mode, what's the point? Because you have to be living in Japan to play this game. Because of course all the in the online modes were in Japanese. And you can only play that online modes in Japan. The game was pointless. So I really think the Panasonic 3D version is worth buying, not the Sega Dreamcast one. Because the Panasonic 3D version is a full complete game without online modes. Which is right, because there's no online modes in games consoles at that time. So I would prefer the Panasonic 3D version or the Dreamcast version. Because there's no point people in the UK playing Super Street Fighter 2X Grandmaster Challenge on Sega Dreamcast in these countries. No point. It's pointless. And it was really expensive. Another great example. I'm not going to keep on talking about this, but Panasonic 3D is this great case, man. This should not be ignored, man. Before we go into that, there was another fighting game exclusive made by Naughty Dog Way of the Warrior. Was Where the Warrior a good game? Pretty good. Pretty good. Maybe my personal favorite as Panzer 3 game is Super Street Fighter 2X Grandmaster Challenge. That's the finest fighting game on Panzer 3 though. You can't beat that anyway. Where the Warrior was made by Naughty Dog. These are the guys who brought you Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Daxter game. The guys made this fighting game, you know. He had a mixture of Western. And Japanese characters in there. He had a character called Nobunaga and they know Nobunaga. Yeah, you've only heard him from the history. There are Nobunagas doing in there. I don't know if he actually looks like him, but there was a cat called Nobunaga in there. He had a sword. This game actually looks pretty good. The graphics. Right. The gameplay. Bibles. Sword fighting. Punch. Kicks. Everything's there in this game. It's a pretty good game, actually. This reminds me of the, the similar example of Atari Jaguar Balls, Kasumi Ninja. It's flipping dreadful. It's a dreadful game. There's not much to the bloody game. There's nothing, nothing in it. I would say Panasonic Studio Well Warrior is better than Kasumi Ninja than Atari Jaguar. This game is quality. It's got, it's got much better graphics, great playability, good music, which is all rock music. If you like rock music, you like it. You can't beat this. Kasumi Ninja is. You couldn't touch this game. No way. Kasumi Ninja might have the atmospheric of Japanese stuff like that, but it still doesn't win. Not in terms of graphics and gameplay, no. It doesn't win. It's not that great. Not at all. Where the Warrior looks like a complete winner over Kasumi Ninja. If you look at that kind of era. They both were released in 994, not I think the games were released on like kind of similar times. Or probably different months and all that dates. So Where the Warrior is better than Kasumi Ninja. Definitely. Do not think that Kasumi Ninja and Tarja 
is better? No, it's not. Where the Warrior is a quality game. Because Naughty Dog is a good developer. And whoever made Kasumi Ninja is not a good developer. It's just a gimmick. It's just trying to impress us with some chubby like that's Kasumi Ninja. Good music, good atmosphere. The game doesn't cut any mustard. You're not going to buy a game just because it's got good music and it just went to the bloody, but it's got the text and the story. That's only the best part of the game. The good thing about the game was like, you know, guys like Zenzo Hobaki, they had good fireballs. The good character, that was the only good character in the game. Just one good character. And they had very limited moves. Zenzo was the best character in the game. And that's really weird, boring fighters in the game. People like Alaric, Angus, Chiagi, what the heck is all this rubbish? What kind of rubbish characters are these? I don't like these characters. I did choose them, yeah, just for you know, one and a half. Well, I don't just like them. But the way of the Warrior characters are really impressive. So let's go more further. By the way, I think Panasonic 3 had better racing games than Sega Saturn. Mm. PlayStation only had Gran Turismo and Ridge Racer Type 4. But if you don't like Ridge Racer Type 4, it's going, it's getting all that. You wouldn't like the game anyway. I'm not being funny, some people don't like that game. And Gran Turismo, people go, is the uh, it's the best driving game. I don't think it is. It's only for them people who like driving simulations. It's a river driving simulator, isn't it? If you don't like that kind of thing, you won't like Grand Turismo anyway. It's not being. It's not about people reviewing the game and saying it's the best driving game. But it's it's the up to the customers and the people who play the game. They're gonna like it because I know a few guys. They don't like Richard's Type 1 Grand Trismo on PlayStation. They don't like it. They go, they're boring. They go, we don't like Richard's Type 4. Because kind of, we don't like the way he skids and all that. Because hard, the cars are hard to control. It's impossible to play. Some people can't play that game. And Grand Trismo is for people who are into licenses. If you don't like that kind of thing, you're going to find the game really boring. But with Panasonic 3 do they had like arcade style games. They were really, really good driving games. On uh, plus one three, I didn't, I didn't mention that to you. Alright, we're going to go to the future. Sorry, I keep on saying that. Not going to that. But the racing games, I would say they were better than Saturn and PlayStation, man. They were simplified driving games. They were full realistic. They were really good. They were really good fun. So let's get into the shooters. The shooters on Plus on Video are really good. And I do say they're really, really good stuff on there. We had stuff like, I mean, the primary example that the Plasma 3D had was Starblade. Now, Starblade has been on a number of platforms. It came on Mega CD, where, Sega Mega CD, where the screen was small and there was another panel on the side. It was small in the game and the graphics were all right. I know it was the original one, but I wouldn't say it's the best one. But the Panasonic 3D version had um, a 3D version and the arcade mode. Obviously, the Panasonic 3D arcade mode one was good as the arcade, but the 3D version was the one to shine. It was even better than the arcade version. So, what other platforms did Starblade came on? Sony PlayStation. So what's the difference? There was no difference. It was comparable. It was just comparable. It was just good. Panasonic 3D version was good as the Sony PlayStation one. Which one should you get? I wouldn't bother the Sony PlayStation. If you already own the Panasonic 3D and you got Starblade on that, there's no point buying it. And why was the Sony PlayStation game called Starblade Alpha? Well, I can't see nothing Alpha in it. There was no more, there's nothing improvement on graphics, nothing. 
is it literally the same as Panasonic Video? The Panasonic Video, in my opinion, is the best version. All right. Another issue term Panasonic Video was Star Wars Rebel Assault. This was, I would say, the best version again of this game. They did raise Star Wars Rebel Assault 2. The game was crap. It was crap. I don't like the game. I don't care what people say. The game was crap. It was totally crap. I didn't enjoy the game at all. It's really boring. And it's too difficult to play. Again, Star Wars Rebel Assault was a great game. Alright. Nova Storm. It was another shooter. Mm, not good as Starblade though, Nova Storm. But it was a another good game on Panasonic 3D on Nova Storm. Yeah, it was a great shooter. It was a bit difficult, but it was pretty good. So now you know that Panasonic 3D was a really, really interesting system. It had very good games, right? That the Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Ezekiel New US, Ezekiel New CD, Tori Jaguar, even some PlayStation. I don't think they could compare with it really. Because most majority of these games, they went on to Saturn and PlayStation. I wouldn't say that's building up the collection of their systems, because most majority of these games were put on their, their systems. They didn't have many of their own games, you know. I, didn't, they, I, didn't, I don't think they did. Some PlayStation didn't have much of their own games. They were just producing sequels of their own exclusives. Because Panasonic Video had a lot of exclusives, man. That were exclusive to their system, you see. And then they were put on to the other platforms to sell on PlayStation. So I would really say, but even I would say, even the upcoming system, yeah, the upcoming systems as well, even they didn't have great games like this. Because even the modern systems that we have now, like Xbox One and PS4, what were they doing? And PS3 and Xbox 360. What were these systems doing? They don't have any exclusive of their own. They took all the games on the PCs. Hmm. They did all that kind of weird things. Panasonic 3D, in my opinion, is one of the best games console ever made. And it produced a lot of, lot of good games. You gotta understand that. It's got the best game. Even if you own a Panasonic 3D in the year 2020, you're gonna think it's really impressive. You're gonna think it's really impressive. You ain't gonna believe this, I'm gonna say yeah. I had a Sony PS4. I didn't like the system, you know. <laughs> I didn't like it. I think it's really otherwise really boring. All the Sony PS4 was doing, he had very few. PS4 exclusives and people get jumpy about them. Very limited exclusive games. You know what? I'm not want to be funny. They were all boring games. Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us, Spider Man. I don't like any of these games. <laughs> these are exclusive on PS4. They're all rubbish, man. I don't, I'm not being funny. I don't like any of them. And a lot of people think they're good games. I don't know what's good about them. They're, they're alright. They're not, they're not all that, really. I don't think they're that good. And all the characters in these games, what's good about these characters? I'm not a fan of Spider-Man. I don't like Spider-Man anyway. And Spider-Man games sold really well on this damn system. And you know all the rest of the games? They're all from the PC. Hmm. They're all from the PC. Grid. Yakuza series. How many more games do you want? Uh, Need for Speed. Half dozen of them really. 
Oh my gosh. It's a lot of it. So grab a six. Tell of six. <laughs> Three of five. All of these games from the PC, man. Shenmue 3. Team Sonic Racing. Sonic Forces. Now you tell me what's on PS4. There is nothing on it. If you're already on a PC, you're in good hands, man. You can just... Even play a... I'm not being funny. You know most minority of these games. Only Dallas 6 doesn't work. If you got a, if you got a i3 core, Intel HD 4400, just a PC, you can play all of these games on that integrated GPU without buying another machine. You can just play all these games. Yeah, if you don't care for the graphics, all of these multi-format games that came on PS4, which are already available on PC, you can play them on Intel HD 4100 on an integrated GPU. Imagine that. And these systems are really cheap. If you can buy, if you can find an Intel i3 core with a with Intel HD 4100 4 GB RAM, you're good to go. You will be able to play most majority of these PS4 games. Not only that, even the technology which is coming now on Sony PS5 and Xbox Series X, you were able to play most of these games on Intel HD 4100. I'm not talking to you. Why do you people spend lots of money just for flipping graphics? To get some high performance on all that crap. People only do that to get 4K and 8K resolutions. That's the only thing I can understand. Nothing else. If you're not into that, Intel HD 4100 is good to go, man. You can play all these games from Sony PS4 and Sony PS5. Remember one thing. Most majority of these games are already on PS on the PC. Alright? Panasonic 3DO. Let's go back on there. Had the most majority exclusives than any platform. Including the Sega Dreamcast as well. Panasonic 3DO and Sega Dreamcast, right, has my vote to have the most majority original exclusive games to their systems that you probably wouldn't find any of these games on other platforms. There will be some games still on Panasonic 3DO, right, that you still won't find on other platforms. I am going to make another video on this in the next video where I'm going to be talking about the Panasonic Studio games. The big exclusive games here that you will never ever find on other platforms. Trust me, these are the exclusive games that you will buy your Panasonic 3 in in the year 2020. I am not kidding you. You will still buy them because these good games, like I'm not going to tell you too much. I'm only going to give you the ones I told you in this video. Super Street Fighter 2X Grandmaster Challenge and Gridders. I'm not going to say more than that. These were top exclusives on Panasonic Studio, man. You're still going to buy them. Trust me, they're classics. I'm going to tell you more big exclusive games that you will not see in today's systems. Not on Saturn, not on Playstations, not on any of Xbox One, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X. They won't come on them. These systems are just made for hardware. Playing modern gaming, nothing else. Remember one thing. All these modern games you're talking about, they're going to rip off some games on Panasonic 3DO. <laughs> PC, you watch. What's going to happen? Just watch what's going to happen. They're going to take some games from Panasonic 3DO, Sega Dreamcast, and PC. 
They can take a lot of games on PC. A lot of. They can take from these three platforms. Just watch. You, you know which pla these three platforms are games are gonna come on Sony PS5 and Xbox Series X. Just watch. You're not gonna get many exclusives on them. You won't. Because these these companies are making a fool out of people. They won't release any exclusives. There will be very few exclusives that are gonna come on them. You know, in the near future, these systems ain't gonna sell very well. I'll be honest with you, they're not gonna sell very well. When Google Stadia and Nvidia has already given us these cards, the 30 series, they're in big trouble. What are they gonna do? Because if you can play a lot of PC games, we got Google Stadia and Nvidia powerful video cards. Why do we need PS5 and Xbox Series X? You know what? These two companies, Sony and Microsoft thinks that these systems are gonna sell. They're not gonna sell, trust me. I would buy just a Panasonic 3D O man and a PC. Go for these two systems, man. Panasonic 3D and PC are one of the best systems to own. Because Panasonic 3D has got one of the best exclusive games to a games console. PC has the best modern games ever developed you'll play on any platform so I hope you guys enjoyed my video today as me quite informative Panax Sonic 3D is still one of the best games consoles to own don't think it is it still is I don't think anyone actually said that but it's still one of the best games consoles to own Trust me on that. It's pretty cheap. There's a lot of good exclusive games on it. So yeah, there you have it. Panasonic 3D O 32-bit multiplayer gaming system. Hope you guys like my video today. Give your likes, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.